So I'm like, where to next? Tahiti, Belize, Australia, and she says... Chicago. I don't want to go to Chicago. Why not? Because in Chicago, you're going to wear like 10 articles of clothing. There's going to be bra, panties, shirt, pants, socks, shoes. If we go to an island vacation, you're going to wear a bikini. That's two. That's two pieces of clothing between me and the goal. And if we're on a topless beach, then it's only one. And if it's a nude beach, GOLA! Well, this goal will be in Chicago. So we went to go visit some friends in Chicago. She-town? No, it's Chi-town. Well, if it's Chi-town, then it's Chicago. No, it's Chicago. Then it's She-town. Next, you're going to call it Illinois. It is Illinois. No, it's Illinois. Pfft. Where's there an S that's silent? There's always, there's, there's plenty of words that have silent The coolest S's. thing we saw in Chicago was in the airport bathroom. Well, I don't know if it was the coolest thing. I've never seen it anywhere else. Oh, well, that's true. So wait a minute, say that again? Which one the bathroom? You wave your hand over the sensor that's on the tank, uh -huh. and the seat cover automatically advances around the toilet. You're not talking about the tank? Nope. No way. Told you, and you doubted me. <laughs> well, that's what I say to you. All right, that was pretty cool. See? So we hadn't even left the airport in Chicago, and we'd already seen an L train, and we spent some time and hung out in one of Chicago's cool wind-breaking bus stops. So we made it to Chicago. Yeah. We're in some little weird round oval thingy, waiting for our ride. Like a bus stop. That's sort of like a bus stop. Kind of under the L train. Yep, the L train's right there. Oh, it's a public library. Our first adventure took us to get food. I was starving. We went full on Chicago style and went to Kim and Carlo's wiener stand. Yay! We're gonna have a Chicago dog. And what is a Chicago dog? A Chicago dog has mustard, relish, onion, tomato, sport pepper, celery salt, and a pickle spear. That's a real Chicago dog. <laughs> what do you think? It's really okay. The peppers and everything, it's really fine. I, I got it loaded. Yeah, I got it exactly as it was on the menu. Um, I don't know. Wouldn't be something I would order regularly, but it's okay. Did you enjoy your Chicago dog? It was yummy! I prefer just mustard. Well, really, my go-to comfort food is mac and cheese. This is the world's biggest piece of macaroni and cheese. It weighs 872,000 pounds. She's gonna eat it. She really did try to eat that. <sighs> Whatever. Next, we went to the Shedd Aquarium. Where she tried to kiss a jellyfish. I did not try to kiss a jellyfish. <laughs> Looks like a kiss to me. I was blowing that to you. You were blowing me? Stop. Shedd is a really nice aquarium. Yeah, it has tons of fish. Cue the fish montage. Are you learning about the animals? Yes. Next, we saw the most dangerous animal in the animal kingdom. It is not the most dangerous animal. Killed the croc hunter. That's pretty ruthless. <laughs> Do you touch any? No. No? Was it cool? Feels slimy. 
I held his hand. <laughs> it's waving at you. Just two fingers on the top. Oh, is it? I nice. totally didn't move. I'm sorry. He thought he wanted to reach out and shake his hand. I, there's so many warning signs that I just ignored them all. After the aquarium, we took a walk into downtown Chicago. This is Lake Michigan. It's the reason Chicago has freezing winters. Yeah, the wind blows across this water, gets blistering cold, and freezes the city. Our first stop in the park was this art structure. We are in Millennium Park. No, we're not. Well, Grant Park. Grant Park. Ha! <laughs> you don't even know where we are. Oh, this is Grant Park Music Festival in Millennium Park. Yeah, but yes, what's the structure? <laughs> what is this? What is the structure called? I don't know. It does I have a name. Of course it has a name. It's the Pritzker Pavilion. You just looked that up. So, I'm the dumb one. <laughs> My head gets all cloudy. Yeah, like Cloud Gate. Huh? The Bean. We're at the Bean what is, Millennium Park. What is the Bean? I have to read about it. The Bean, or Cloud Gate, is a reflective steel sculpture that is inspired by Mercury. You mean Queen's Freddie Mercury? Galileo. No, Liquid Mercury. Its curved mirror-like structure reflects and distorts the city's skyline, providing striking reflections of visitors. It is the first public artwork in the United States by world-renowned artist Anish Kapoor. It cost $23 million to build. It is made up of 168 steel plates welded together with the seams ground and polished until they disappear. At 33 feet high, 66 feet long, and 42 feet wide, it weighs in at nearly a quarter million pounds. You can walk under Cloud Gate's 12-foot high arc. On the underside is the umphalos. That's Greek for navel. It's a concave chamber that warps and multiplies reflections. It kind of looks like a vagina. It is not a vagina. Yeah, the bean is like a big clitoris. No, it is shaped like a bean because of a legume. Then why did they put an enormous tampon just down the stairs from it? Oh. This is the world's largest tampon. See? Ugh. Actually, it's a face. Oh, I bet you'd like a face in your bean. Vincent. <laughs> hey, what is that? Fountain. <laughs> that is pretty neat. That is neat, but this is a real fountain. That's the Clarence Buckingham Memorial Fountain. The geyser caused a wedding party to scatter. It sure did. It is considered Chicago's front door with eruptions occurring hourly. Married with Children Fountain in Chicago. Yay. Oh my God, you totally dissed me. I even got down on my knees and sang to you. Love and marriage, love and marriage. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have dissed you if you did more on your knees. Like scrub the floors. For dinner, we went all out, full on, shy cago style. Mm, Giordano's. Giordano's shy cago style pizza is dough, toppings, cheese, dough, and then sauce. It takes up to two months for a chef to learn Giordano's 40-year-old pizza-making method. You'll make it work at some point. The Very second good. dough, uh, that's different. I've never had this yet. Mm. Is it good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really good. It is unique. It's not, uh, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have this at home. Mm -mm. It is cheesy. Those reactions are way underwhelmed. The more we ate, the more we love that pizza. Oh, yeah. It's definitely one of the things we're going to miss most about Chicago. Yeah, but at least they will ship their pies to Cali. After a full belly and a good night's rest, we grabbed a train to downtown. We were trying to figure out the uh, train yeah. purchasing ticket thing. We are going in Chicago. We are going to go to Tilt. And we're also going to go to Skydeck. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Wow, you really are excited about coming. Oh, it's a double decker. We 
get any cabs. Nope, we walked all over Chicago. It's okay, it's really not that big. We passed the Chicago Sun-Times building. This was Roger Ebert's home paper. A film review by him could make or break your career. Yep, and just past that was the Sky Deck. And what is the Sky Deck? The Sky Deck is a glass balcony that hangs off of the 103rd floor. <laughs> We're here at the Willis Tower, formerly the Sears Tower, to go visit the Sky Deck. Come on, guys. Hang on! Wow. Oh, oh, mine's been popping. Where are we? Oh, we're at Sky Deck. We're at the top of the Sky Deck. Here. So we're at the top of the Willis Tower in the Sky Deck where there's little spiders hanging out outside, which is kind of weird. What are we, we're 103 floors up, taller than the Empire State Building. And you can see 72,000 models. Wow. That's, that right there is Africa. It's not Africa. Cambodia? Are you high? Higher than the Empire State Building. The Statue of Liberty is 305 feet tall. The Great Pyramid is 480 feet tall. Well, the Space Needle is 605 feet tall. The Eiffel Tower is 1,062 feet tall. The Empire State Building is a whopping 1,250 feet tall. And Chicago's Willis Tower is 1,450 feet tall. Ah! This is so cool. I can't put my face in my One, two, wait, go, go, go. Oh my god. One, two, I would have died if that thing had broke. Yeah, you definitely would have. This is the structural engineer. I thought it was Lincoln's face half blown off. You thought that was Lincoln? Well, half his face was blown off. Still too soon? I'm drinking Starbucks under the L tree in Chicago. With Starbucks on hand, it was time to get some Garrett's popcorn. You and your popcorn. Well, you and your Starbucks. I do love Starbucks. I do love popcorn. What are we gonna do? We're gonna get some Garrett popcorn. Yeah. I'm gonna get the Chicago mix, which is caramel crisp with cheese corn, and I'm gonna get a small nut caramel crisp. Okay, so 11.47. We strolled past the Oriental Theater. That's not PC. It should be called the Asian Theater. No. People are called Asians. Things from the Orient can be called Oriental. That makes no sense. That part of the world is Asia. So things that come from Asia are Asian, but the people are Oriental. It's the famous Chicago Theater right here on State Street and John Leguizamo is performing here tonight. We're not going to go see him, though. Did you really want to see John Leguizamo? Sure. Do you even know who John Leguizamo is? Yeah, he was the father from Third Rock from the Sun. That's John Lithgow. Ew. Behind me to the left is the Trump Tower. It's a triangular-shaped building. Pretty cool looking. Who's Trump? Trumps? The Apprentice? The Apprentice! Cut. We happened upon what appeared to be a very unique parking structure. These two corncob shaped towers are Marina City. They are 587 feet of vertical mixed use residential and commercial space. They were the first buildings in the United States. I can't believe we caught that. That is in really bad taste. Why? Because of 9-11. That was like in 2001. Mm. The only way to fight terrorism is to take it back. Anyway, those were the first buildings in the United States to be built using tower cranes. Next, we passed a quintessential shy Chicago alley. The kind where you get whacked at 3 a.m. Yeah, I think there might have been a rotting corpse in that alley. Mm. It smells so bad. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Why? Holy 
<laughs> I was holding my breath. I wasn't flying. God, that stunk so bad. It was pretty cool looking, though. We're going to Weber's. Yeah. We're going to Weber's Grill for lunch. These are called Weber Ranch Kettle Grills. They use charcoal and fire starters to get the grills up to 1,400 degrees. 1,400 degrees? Maybe that's why these steaks were charred. Those are metal, silly. Oh. He looks happy. Probably from touching your tushy. I better bring him back to reality. Huh? We just had awesome lunch at Weber's Grill. I had a great burger. They had great, great beef brisket. It's a definitely must here in Chicago. A burger and beef brisket? Yeah, I know. I came back 10 pounds heavier. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Nice. But what's tilt? First, we're almost 1,030 feet above street level at the seventh tallest building in the United States, where you can see up to 50 miles away, and on a clear day, you can see four surrounding states. All that is pretty, but what exactly is tilt? Tilt is a window that first you lean against it. You're holding handles on the sides. You're leaning against this window as it tilts out away from the building at 45 degrees so it feels like you're staring straight down at the streets beneath you. Yeah, well, it feels more like this. Three, five, two, one. <laughs> yeah, you can't just I think that's the water tower. That was the water tower that I was looking for, I think, from the old Chicago fire. You just kept laughing. It felt weird. It did feel weird, but it was quite a unique experience. Anyway, speaking of the old Chicago water tower, why don't you tell them what it is? It's the old Chicago water tower. It survived the fires. The old Chicago fire. Right, the old Chicago fire. So that's the old Chicago? The yeah, so? Yeah, so that is you before direction. This is you after direction. That's the old Chicago water tower that survived the Chicago fire. Still, I know the facts. You may know the facts, but you lack direction. Whatever. So the Chicago water tower was erected in 1869 and housed a 138 foot high standpipe, three feet in diameter, and it equalized the pressure and controlled the water flowing throughout the city. Fortunately, the tower was solidly constructed of limestone, a foresight which proved invaluable two years later when, on October 9, 1871, flames engulfed Chicago and leveled nearly every building except for the water tower. Why was that invaluable? Because it didn't burn. But it's not like, thanks to the tower, water pressure remained and they were able to put the fire out. Everything burned. Who needs water at that point? Um, well, we still have the structure. <laughs> you're such a dork. I'm a dork, you're a dork. <laughs> when was I a dork? First. Those doors are everywhere in Chicago. They are way more efficient than regular doors. They're never fully opened or fully closed, so the wind can't blow in and the heat can't escape. I failed to see where I was ever a dork. Oh, Ghirardelli. Oh, yeah.
You are such a child. You enjoyed that ice cream too. Yeah, but I enjoyed it like an adult. <laughs> Oh, that's enough. So we took a ride up to Woodstock, Illinois. Ooh, Water Towers. Which is where they filmed the epic movie. Water Tower. No, Groundhog Day. Water Tower. What is with you in the Water Towers? Water Towers provided an important function to the cities. Everything is flat, so they pump the water up into that bulb, and then gravity forces it down and creates pressure for everybody in the city. Oh. Thankfully, vents can park here. Are you trying to say I'm under three inches? Sometimes you need direction. <laughs> We're here at Woodstock Square where they film Groundhog Day the movie. And this is the site of the first snowfall dance. That's what makes us such good friends. If you haven't seen the movie Groundhog Who Day. Who hasn't? That's true. But if you haven't seen the movie Groundhog Day, Bill Murray stars as a reporter who has to wake up and repeat the same day over and over again. Groundhog Day. Here's a clip. That was supposed to be my line. Okay. It's Groundhog Time. Okay, I'm in three, two, one. Once a year, the eyes of the nation turn to this tiny hamlet in western Pennsylvania to watch a master at work. That is how a pro does it. I didn't do so bad. You didn't do so good. I didn't have a director. Here we are at the site in Woodstock, Illinois, where Punxsutawney Phil is going to either see his shadow or not see his shadow. Do you think he's going to see his shadow? Hmm, yes. Definitely going to see his shadow today. I completely disagree with her. Here, this is you know, why. <laughs> what, what happens if he sees his shadow? Do we get more winter? Or or do we get more winter? I'm not quite sure. No, if he sees his shadow, that means spring is coming! No, it's not coming. See, I wasn't that bad. You were no Bill Murray. Sometimes Bill Murray isn't Bill Murray. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. But you couldn't walk in his shoes. We did walk in his footsteps, though. <laughs> it's too big! He must have really little feet. But why does he step there? I don't know. Let's see. It's been great seeing you, Needlehead. Take care. <laughs> Watch out for that first step. It's a doozy. <laughs> of course, the guy laughing is Ned Ryerson, and their meeting is one of the movie's most memorable scenes. Yeah, except when you're trying to reenact it, then you can't remember any of it. I didn't have a director. Well, let's see how it's supposed to go. Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil Connors? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Ned! Ryerson! Phil, I sell insurance. What a shock. Do you have life insurance? Hey! Oh, Phil Connors, I thought that was you. My, oh my. Ned? Ryerson? Bing! Phil? Hey! Phil Connors! Ned? That's the proper Groundhog Day greeting. Phil! Ned? Ned Phil Ryerson? Phil oh my god! <laughs> Phil! Ned? Phil Connors? Ned Ryerson? <laughs> my old high school buddy. <laughs> oh my god. So are you trading roles now? Phil? Phil Robinson? I don't, I don't Phil know. Connor. <laughs> Phil? Phil Connor? Ned. Oh, I haven't Ned. seen you since you jacked off my brother. You know, I've been trying right? to escape you for would years. You, would you like to buy some car insurance? I can save you up to 15%. As much as I would love to spend the week visiting old movie locations, there were other things to see. Okay, children, now I'm going to remind you that this is a planetarium, not a Bangkok brothel. We're going to the planetarium. 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 What is it? The planetarium. <laughs> I thought it was planet.
planetarium. Well, it is, but I have a bone disease, which impedes my ability to pronounce the T in planetarium. We did get to see Gemini 12. Yeah, it launched November 11th, 1966. It's all right. Two guys spent four days cooped up in this capsule. Actually, the ship docked and one guy went out on a couple of spacewalks. Still, how do you poop in there? Speaking of poop, we found Uranus. Turns out it's pretty big too. Perhaps one of the strangest features of Uranus is its complex ring system. Several small moons orbit around it. You get it? Anus, cheek, cheek, moons. <laughs> That's the famous cold Chicago wind. Ah, our texting niece almost took a fall. <laughs> no texting and walking. We're here at the Field Museum to see Sue and a bunch of other stuff. This is Sue. This is Sue. She's the most complete and largest T-Rex ever discovered. We don't know her sex, but she was named Sue after the lady who discovered her, Sue Henderson. And she was found in North Dakota, South Dakota, North Dakota, one of the Dakotas. Well, you've narrowed it down to one of the Dakotas. Well, at least I didn't narrow it down to one of the Virginias. Like East Virginia? There's no East Virginia. Oh, that's right. It's East and West Carolina. Whatever. It was found at the Hill Creek Formation of Western South Dakota on August 12, 1990. You looked that up. So? I'm just looking at the way that the vertebrae are pointed, and I'm looking at the skull and the size of it, and the size of the ocular orbits and the nasal cavity, and it's just amazing. This skeleton spent 10 years in a government storage unit while the FBI, the National Park Service, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and the owner of the property where the bones were discovered battled for ownership. This is all covered in the documentary, Dinosaur 13. Just the way she's put together. And I'm wondering if this coming down here is like an os penis. An os penis? Well, Okay, in placental mammals, they have a penile bone, which helps with erection, but it's not located in reptiles, but that's what the bone maybe looked like in this big dinosaur, and who knows, maybe dinosaurs had them. I don't know. I'm just talking out my butt, but that's kind of what it looked like. I was just, I don't know, I was just wondering. We saw a shiny penis. Hmm? Huh? Here's a limestone statue of a man holding his rock-hard penis. And here's a polished redware statue of a man holding his enlarged wanker. Someone actually polished his wanker. That was a job. Someone's job in Egypt was to polish wankers. These are two mummy children. They look like twins. Here's an infant. Aw, he's so cute and some partially wrapped hands and feet. Ooh, those must stink. This is an unwrapped mummy of a boy. How did they do that? Well, an incision was made on the left side of the body to remove all the organs. The body was then stuffed with straw or linen to hold its shape while it dried for 40 days. As much as 400 yards of linen strips were used to meticulously wrap the body. Then it would be coated in hot liquid resin. Hmm. Now, on to some street art. Where someone broke the law. This is a famous Chicago statue <laughs> of a boy being pissed on by a bunch of fish. And it's called Boy Gets Pissed On By Fish. It's ice cream time, it's ice cream time. But where should we go? We should go to McDonald's. But not just any McDonald's. Are the original McDonald's cups. Studies show that 2.7 people die each year from escalators. 
but 2.1 of those were caused by falls. Still, you should take the stairs. 12,000 people die each year from taking the stairs. Yeah, but those are caused by falls. Hmm. It was time to go check out some more Chicago movie locations. Behind me is a house that was used in risky business. It was Joel's house where Rebecca De Mornay corrected young Joel's adolescent childhood. The lawn behind me over there is where Guido the Killer Pimp sold Joel back all of their stuff. What about this? What's that? Some glass artsy fartsy thing. Here. Oh God. Catch! No! <clears throat> Turns out, Cameron lived just up the street and around the corner from Joel. I wonder if they were friends. Joel would be about three years older. Still, an adolescent Cameron would probably visit Joel's whorehouse. Probably. This is Cameron's house from the epic movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And we stopped here because sometimes you just gotta smell the roses. It's supposed to be you just gotta stop. And well, smell it's it. the it's still there, the connotation is <laughs> So you might remember in the finale scene in Risky Business where Cameron, okay, it's the pivotal. Movies, Ferris Bueller's Day oh. Off. Damn it. Through those windows is where Cameron crashed his dad's Ferrari into that creek right down there. on the bastard's face. You killed the car. Whoa. As much as I would love to tour other movie locations. We are in Chicago, and one of the most popular things to do in Chicago is eat. eat. We're going to eat lunch at Pop Ellie's. They have these all over the place, everywhere here. It's like Subway back home. <laughs> After lunch, we took a drive into downtown Chicago. It's the craziest thing. Like, is there anybody who actually looks at that sign and goes, oh, you know, 14 years in jail is no big deal, but $10,000 fine, you can't afford that. After managing to not kill any workers and thus save us 10 grand, we took a stroll through Oz Park. It was named in 1976 to honor the author of The Wizard of Oz, Frank Baum, who settled in the Chicago area. Oh my God. Fence. Okay, it was time to really up the class factor. We visited one of Chicago's most famous fountains. More famous than Buckingham? Oh yeah. So this is Chicago's world famous shit fountain. Some people put money in it and make wishes on the ship. Really, I took a ship here and they just bronzed it and they made it a ship fountain. It's an expression of art. There's bees on the ship. I'm not full of shit anymore. I don't know what other shit I should say. So while we were there, James, who lives right behind the shit, invited us in to show us some more of Jersey S. Kennar's art. Here, here. I'll show you. Oh, all right. I'm just in the process of moving in. Oh, wow. Oh, what's his name? Jersey, J-E-R-Z-Y. What's he doing? Yeah. Yeah. Sander? Like Sander. Oh, he had this, he started this ancient bar. It was going to be like a, a, a local kind of like a community, artistic thing for the Polish community. Go online, Google it. It's amazing. Well, that's a shitty neighborhood. 
Stop it. James was cool, though. I liked the puppy. Huge animal. Well, it was time to go see some really huge animals. Where are we going, hon? Lincoln Park Zoo to have an awesomely fantastic day. I gotta say, nothing makes a peaceful day at the zoo more peaceful than a Blue Angels air show. They were crazy noisy. our day. We did get to see gray titty monkeys. Oh yeah. Little is known about this extremely rare primate species. Fewer than 45 currently exist in zoos worldwide. They are believed to be monogamous and often huddle, tails entwined with their young. We also got the opportunity to feed Mira the camel. Oh, it's trying to cheat. Right. <laughs> it is trying to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? You got some freaky lips? He's all like, like spitty. You're moving fast. Yeah, holding. Best of all, I got to see a real animal brawl. Aw, poor thing. Wildlife. You're so stupid. Oh, sorry, did I make it mess up? Oh, oh he's after him again. Holy shit. Can I chase it? No, it was cool. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> that rabbit was like, squirrel! Oh, there's a sign. Mm -hmm. Here we are at the famous Wrigley Field. So exciting. We're not gonna see a Cubbies game, but behind me is the field, and Wrigley actually purchased Catalina Island. So for more on Mr. Wrigley, watch our Catalina Island video. Interestingly, there are these apartment buildings that install these bleachers on the roof so they could sell tickets to the ball games. Our niece Amanda took us on a tour of a haunted building. Who doesn't love a good ghost story? Well, I don't. I really don't love any ghost story. So in World War II, it was called a fence fuse, and they made fuses for like refrigerators. And then once that closed down and the war stopped, it was built for a rendering plant where they took, they had live horses on the field, and they would take their horses and cows, and then they would grind them and like put them in cat food and fur. And the Chicago plants would take like horse meat and put it in food and say it was 100% beef when it wasn't. Ooh. Train tracks! I've always wanted to walk down train tracks with the greenery on the side. Like, stand by me. Stand by me. Oh. It's so cool. <laughs> and then it became a, a, a grease factory. And there were workers that were working in there. Um, it caused a fire and it burnt down. Some people died in there. And then one of the workers actually, before it happened, crossed the train tracks and got hit by a train. People say that he was like, depressed and wasn't getting enough money and he was having a terrible life so they say like he haunts the tracks here too and then they say that the plant the smell of the plant is supposed to be the smell of like the meat like they kill like all the horses they kill and then yeah that's pretty much it so is this urban legend or is any of this fact no some of it, that all of like what it was it's a fact like it's true like what it actually was it was a grease factory it was a rendering plant it was a few Pencil plant or whatever. So. This looks like an abandoned building with no sort of stuff. <laughs> kind of creepy. You seem scared. I wasn't scared. You look frightened. Well, I went to the Stickney house, didn't I? Yeah, but that was just a house. Or was it? Behind me is the Stickney House. This house was built in the 1800s, and the people who built this house would hold seances here, and they wanted to build the house out in the middle of the countryside where they could invite people 
far and wide to participate in their seances. And the house is supposedly built with no corners on the outside or the inside because they felt that the corners would trap the evil spirits. The spirit world. This is a tennis ball. It was built without corners. This way it could bring the spirits in. It'd be very mystical. We stopped to observe a water tower. What is it with your fascination with water? I like water. Well, everyone likes water. It's the elixir of life. Look, usually we go on an island vacation. And island vacations are filled with water. And water means you're wearing a bikini. And I get to see you in a bikini. So I like water. Oh. It's an upside down penis. <laughs> I threw him off. <laughs> this is a water tower and it has a lot to do with the, uh, or its purpose is to promote water pressure within the area. Right? It looks like an anal probe. Say Ferris. Next up, we visited Lake Michigan's Navy Pier. Wow, listen to that wind. It's crazy. This is Chicago, the Windy City. It looks a lot like Los Angeles, except there's a lake out there. <laughs> Why are you doing that? I'm filming you filming us. You want to hold it in front of your face? Yeah. I'm filming you filming me. Like this. Well, no. <laughs> Navy Pier's most famous landmark is the 150 foot high Ferris wheel. Oh, you're doing it right <laughs> Chit chit cheerio. Chit cheerio. Pip pip is a squawk. <laughs> You never heard that? Oh. I guess it's just an English thing. We're right at the top. And we're as high as we're going to get. Bye! We're on the Ferris wheel where the Guinness Book of World Records was broken. Was it? Yeah. Longest ride on an amusement park ride ever was on this ride. Oh! Is that going to be In May of 2013, Clinton Shepard broke the Guinness World Record of riding a Ferris wheel of 30 hours and 36 seconds on this Ferris wheel. He continued riding the Ferris wheel to hit a record of 48 hours, eight minutes and 25 seconds. Wow, that's crazy. I can't imagine being on there for two days. Can you imagine being on that Ferris wheel for two days? No, you'd get dizzy. Let's count it down in five, four, three, two, one. If you enjoyed our Chicago video, you will also enjoy our Costa Rica video. <laughs> so subscribe. That's that up there. Leave us a comment. That's those down there. We read those. We do read them. And maybe tell us where we want to go next. They could do that. You could tell us where should we go next? Where? What should we do? Hmm. Where do you want to see us go? Probably an island vacation. Yeah, maybe. Or a European vacation. Europe. Yeah! There's cool things in Europe! I don't want to go to Europe. Oh, come on. <laughs>